Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'in, asyarwa la ilaha illallah, asyarwa muhammadin abduhu rasul Often times people ask me, why do you have to say this Arabic stuff before you begin speaking? Because none of us, we don't really know the Arabic language If you're just talking to Muslims, it's okay, because I guess they all know Arabic But, you know, for us who are English speakers, why don't you just talk English? Why do you say that stuff? What is that? Well, actually, Arabic and Hebrew language and Aramaic language, these are the Semitic languages that all the prophets spoke. This is exactly how they used to begin by always mentioning the name of the one Almighty God. And they would say, Bismillah, in the name of Almighty Allah. Bismillah. So we begin. And we say, Alhamdulillah, which is the praise to Allah, the thanks to Allah. And if I try to say it in English, it's very insufficient. But by saying it in Arabic, I have really said it much bigger. And then I give you the translation in the name of Allah, praise to Allah, thanks to Allah. And then we say the Shahada. And what is the Shahada? That's to bear witness that there is none worthy to worship except one true God. The one God who is the God of Adam, Abraham, and Jacob, and the, tri the 12 tribes, and the God of Moses, and the God of David and Suleiman, the God of Jesus Christ, peace be upon all of them, and the God of Muhammad. And actually, whether people believe it or not, he's still the same God for everybody. So we bear witness to that. We say, I bear witness, there is none worthy of my worship except the one and only God, Allah. And I bear witness to Muhammad being his messenger, being his messenger and his servant. And this is nice because it clearly states who this messenger is to us. We don't think of Muhammad as a son of a God. We don't think of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as having any kind of authority over God or with God or, or like a partnership or a three-in-one organization. Rather, we think of Muhammad as one of the best of the creation of Allah. He's a human being that really did, did amazing things, but he was still a human being. And we also don't accept that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a God or a son of a God. But rather, he also was amazing. A miracle birth. He did miracles, even bringing the dead back to life. But he didn't do it on his own. He did it by the, we say in Arabic, bi'idnillah, the permission of Allah. The permission of Allah. That's how it happens. So we look to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as the highest of the human beings, no doubt. But then we put all of the prophets in this high status, very high status, of being Anbiya. Anbiya, this means a prophet. And there are only some of the Anbiya, only some of the prophets who had wahi or revelation which came with them in the form of written material. For instance, Abraham and Moses and David and Suleiman, all of them had something attributed to them that was in written format. And this was something that people actually referred to, they recited it, and came back to it. Also, amongst the Jews in early days, they memorized word by word and passed it on mouth to ear, their revelations coming to them from Moses. Some Muslims don't know that. They don't know that Moses also had this because the Jews, they used to do that. They used to do it. And I was reading about this in some of their literature that for many, many centuries, they would do this mouth to ear, and then every 50 years, they had what they called jubilee. They would dig up the manuscript that they kept buried in certain places, and then they would recite, and somebody would hold the book on them to be sure that what they had today didn't get changed. And they would look back at the book. This is how they did that. And this was all lost in the Ark of the Covenant at the time of the Babylonian exile. The Babylonians came against the Jews at one time and captured them. 
and those they didn't capture were driven out and they went over to Egypt. The ones that went to Babylon, they lost, after a period of time, they lost this uh, recitation they had. The other thing they had, they mixed it up because different tribes had different versions of this revelation. So when they began to mix it up, it got to a point where they would even argue about what it really said. Then there was one, according to their tradition, who came named Uzair, or Ezra as we call him in English. And Uzair is the one who really put it together. He would listen to this old man recite, and this old man, and this old man. Now one of them might be from the tribe of Judah, another might be from the tribe of Israel, the other one might be from the tribe of Benjamin or so and so, different tribes that they had. And, and I'm not giving you the names in the right order, but the point was that they were different and then what he tried to do was put it all together to make it one. And this is how they were able to continue and maintain what they had. And then later it was written down again and this is what they based the Bible on more or less in Old Testament today. Now, to come back to our subject, which is talking about the Shahada. So when we testify, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that I bear witness that Muhammad is messenger of Allah, we're also bearing witness to all of these prophets as being the Anbiya, the prophets, and Rasul. What is Rasul? The ones who are carrying these messages. Now, the last and the final messenger of Allah the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is having the wahi come with him, which is called Qur'an, or recitation. So the recitation, or Qur'an, is really what we have today that was exactly the same as it was at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and no different. So this is why when we begin our talks, we mention some things in Arabic, because we're referring to something very important, and that what we're going to say now is going to be based on this belief, the belief in the one God, and the belief in these prophets, and the sources that we have, which is the Quran, and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Alhamdulillah, that Allah gave us this deen, this way of life, and preserved it for us, so that we could share it even today, in the same language that it came in, the Arabic language. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. And for more information about this, visit our website. We have a website, www.guideus.tv. .tv. There's also .com .tv, guide us or guide us .tv. And find out more. Wassalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you.